Let's begin today with a very simple question, and that is, how many times have you engaged with that narcissistic person, and as it goes along, you begin thinking, I'm not really able to be my real self with this individual. Has that ever happened to you? You know, so many times that person can be so overwhelming that you begin subjugating your own normal self to the extent that that person who's dominant and not at all empathetic and they're exploitive, they walk away thinking, yeah, that's the way it ought to be. And you've kind of allowed it to happen. Now, one of the things that we'll uh, repeatedly say is you can't really change a narcissist. They are what they are. But I want you to, to acknowledge, you know what? I'm still responsible for me. And many times when you're in the presence of a very strong-willed strong, strong -willed person, it's too easy for you to allow yourself to just kind of be brushed off to the side. And today we're going to take what I refer to as the I refuse approach towards narcissists. I, I refuse to play those games anymore. The more aware you are and the more determined you are to be a healthy person, then you can stay away from their unhealthy initiatives. Now, I have 12 I refuse declarations that I'm going to give you to here today, and the first one kind of sets up all of the rest of them. So let's go carefully with this one, and then uh, I want you to see if you can relate to these 12 statements. Okay, the first one is this. I refuse to allow you to be in charge of my inner stability. You can do whatever you want with your life because I can't stop you, but you can't have what's on the inside of me. That's, that's huge uh, because the, the narcissist wants to get in there and say, no, I'm in charge of me and I'm in charge of you too. And your response from this point forward can be, I, re I refuse to play that game. Uh, it's not going to happen. Or number two, I refuse to engage in circular arguments with you. The minute I sense that you're goading me or invalidating me, I'm done. I I'm not going to get involved in discussions that uh, take me down into a ditch. And again, I wonder how many times have you thought to yourself, <laughs> there I went again. I, I wound up trying to argue my case and it didn't work. Okay, uh, uh, statement number three, I refuse to justify my legitimate emotions needs and interpretations. Even if I don't make sense to you, I make sense to myself. And frankly, that's what matters because uh, the more the narcissist can create and perpetuate doubt and confusion, their gaslighting, then the more it takes you off your game. I refuse to play that anymore. Or number four, I refuse to make excuses for you when other people comment about your dysfunctions. Um, you're on your own when people wonder what's wrong with you. I'm not going to be your flying monkey. Number five, I refuse to cater to your demands and whims and moods. I'm willing to be cooperative when common sense requires that, but I'm no one's lackey. And again, I wondered how many times have you thought I, the, the narcissist just wants me to lay down and just do whatever they want to do. And the good news is you can be a good relational person, but that doesn't require you to just enable that person's dominance. Or number six, I refuse to cling to bitterness and resentment that keeps me tethered to you. I'm learning to find my own sense of inner peace, and that's what I want to remain committed to. That's a huge one. Because so many times when you get so caught up in your strain and tension with that narcissist, it can take you to your place of anger. But I'm, I'm hoping that you can see that as you take this I refuse mentality, that actually is your way of standing upon the legitimacy of your anger without you having to go under. And so uh, you want to make sure that you don't go to your place of bitterness and, and resentment. You do want to stay in your place of assertiveness. I, I refuse to remain uh, tied to that narcissist because of my uh, ongoing, difficult, negative, harsh emotions towards that person. Uh, that doesn't work for me anymore. Number seven, I refuse to take the bait when you assume the victim's position due to me just being me. I see your projections of your own junk onto me. You know, so many times when a narcissist goes into a blame mode, they're actually attributing to you 
the garbage from the inside of themselves that they haven't learned to come to terms with. And you know what? I'm not taking that bait anymore. I refuse to do that. Number eight, I refuse to stay isolated from the people who understand me and know me best. I like being successfully connected. So many times the narcissist either wants to keep you away actively from other individuals or they just leave you feeling so deflated and defeated that you just begin thinking to yourself, why bother? You know what? If you have gifts and if you have skills and if you have something on the inside of you that would benefit others, then don't let the narcissist be your doorway. Uh, and of course, they're going to keep that door shut. Be what you need to be with other individuals. Let them see the goodness that's in you rather than the narcissist letting it be known. You engage with people as I determined it should be. No, I refuse to play that game. Or number nine, I refuse to cloak myself in your messages of shame and guilt. Who are you to judge my character? And you know, when you think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense the more you realize the dysfunction of the narcissist to think, well, I guess I'll just let their word be final and their word is always going to be condescending and harsh and detrimental to you. Wait a minute. That's, that's not logical. I, I refuse to let that person uh, hold shame and guilt over me. If they pick up on my, my mistakes or if they pick up on uh, flaws that are a part of my character, I'm more than willing to discuss it if we're going to go to a, a reasonable place. But if all you want to do is just take me down into a place of, of that uh, devaluation, mm -mm, not doing that. That's not what my primary relationships consist of. Or number 10, I refuse to be wishy-washy in my decisions. I, I'm, I'm, I'm finished filtering who I am through you. So many times you allow yourself to live with doubt and uncertainty. Well, if I do this, is that person going to get mad? If I do this, is that going to just create more disruption? Yeah, at some point, I'm just going to be me. I have a very simple philosophy, and that is I'm not very good trying to be anybody that I'm not. Uh, I am what I am, and the good news is what I am is pretty reasonable. I, I'm not going to be wishy-washy about being me. Decisiveness is a necessity. Or number 11, I refuse to buy into your false image of smugness and superiority. I find it pitiable that you have to elevate yourself at the expense of so many people. It is kind of strange to think that, you know, the way that a person finds their sense of significance is to build themselves up by putting so many people down. Really? No, I, I don't play that game. And I find that to be uh, the game of the schoolyard bully. Not there anymore. And then number 12, I refuse to over apologize for my mistakes or miscalculations. I'll make amends when necessary, but I won't grovel. Now, I want you to recognize that the I refuse response towards a narcissist is your way of declaring, not only is it okay for me to be me, I'm going to be the best person that I know to be. I'm going to be the best version of me that I can be. And if it means that I have to do it away from you, then so be it. Now, there, there's some primary uh, uh, thoughts that I want you to hold on to as we begin to wrap here. The first is you have dignity, live into it. Your dignity is not a matter of public opinion or a vote. And the narcissist wants to say, well, I have the final vote. No, they don't. You have dignity, live into it. In addition to that, you have a free will, exercise it. The narcissist wants to say, I'm in control. You don't need to will yourself into anything. Just look to me. No, free will means I have the privilege to choose. And where it's appropriate, where it's necessary, I'm going to choose based on my own good common sense. And then another primary thought, and that is you have competence. Stand in it. The narcissist wants you to think that you are a nobody and you're just a big mistake maker waiting to make the next mistake. No, you have competence. There's a skill set that you can build on from the inside out. Let's go with that. 
So let's, let's um, finish with this. When a narcissist comes after you with their chronic, predictable criticisms, complaints, and control, it means one huge thing, and that is you're dealing with a troubled soul. And you know what? I refuse to match pitch with that troubled soul. Now, I hope that you find videos such as this to be helpful. And, uh, and, I, and I really am hoping that it, it prompts and stimulates some good thinking on the inside of you. Uh, I like knowing that I'm a part of your journey towards health and uh, healthiness and growth. And so if you want to continue to have uh, access to, uh, to our videos and be apprised of the next ones that come along, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Beneath the video, I have some links to books and workshops and other kinds of resources that you might want to avail yourself to. Um, thanks for having me along. I hope that the, today's uh, discussion is something that stimulates you in the right direction. And I shall see you next time.